Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob and welcome back to Comics Explained, a YouTube channel where I will make you a comic book expert in 30 minutes or less. And in this video, I'm going to make you an expert on the origin of the Eternals. Now, here's the reason why I say the origin, as opposed to like the Eternals Explained. The reality is that the Eternals as a race, as a group, are not particularly interesting outside of their origin. Their origin is super cool, and especially like when you get to the Titanos War, that's really, really amazing. But in terms of the, the nature of the Eternals and like their publication history, what they have to do with like humanity different things like that, we would be much better suited to cover the origin of the Eternals and then go into individual characters, right? Icarus explained, Cersei explained, different things like that. Even like Gilgamesh explained, right? We could do those things individually. And it would really, I think, provide a more comprehensive explanation to the Eternals as opposed to trying to cram what little history there is after the Titanos War into like this, this whole video, right? So uh, this really goes back to what's called the first host of the Celestials. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that means, the Celestials, as you may or may not know, are basically like this this race of space gods. Now their origin has been retold over and over and over again, and more recently it was retold in Al Ewing's Ultimates, which if you never read that, it's an amazing story. It basically deals with like the universal and multiversal Avengers. It's really, 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 really cool. But the, the long and short of this is, regardless of how their origin unfolds, their role largely stays the same. And the, the role that the Celestials played is that they would travel across the universe and they would experiment on the citizens of different planets across the universe. One of the most notable examples of this that predates humanity are the scrolls. Now, what you have with, with regards to the scroll mythos is what's called deviant scrolls. And I'll talk about what it means when I say deviant here in a minute. But largely, the scrolls were essentially a warlike race because the deviants are a warlike group. Uh, this ended up leading to them becoming a peaceful race and expanding across the universe. And then they came across the Kree. And the Kree eventually initiated a war with the scrolls. And the scrolls became warlike again. And the two groups have just been fighting each other ever since, right? So it's called the Kree Scroll War. And, and while it officially did have an end date, it's really more of a ceasefire than anything else. And the two groups really hate each other. That ran all the way up to the events of Empire, where they actually united into a singular empire and have just kind of been following that form ever since. How long that'll last, I really have no idea. But to get back on topic here, the Celestials ended up arriving on Earth. And when they did, they basically met up with a woman by the name of Gaia. Now, Gaia was presented to us in Marvel Comics as essentially Mother Earth or Mother Nature, if that's what you want to call her, the sentience of all flowers flora and fauna across the planet. And what she did is she grabbed a group called the Wanderers. And the Wanderers were really kind of this like missing link between primate man and modern man. And what Gaia did is when she took the Wanderers, she presented them to a celestial by the name of Gamadon the Gatherer. And what this guy did is he broke the Wanderers into thirds. The first third went to Xeron the Tester, who basically destabilized their genes. So he, uh, he kind of created unchecked mutations. And these came in the form of a grotesque physical appearance, enhanced strength, the ability to top in, uh, tap into some kind of, uh, of cosmic energy potentially, but basically they went forward as the deviants. Following that, the second third was given to a guy named Nazar the Calculator. And this guy basically gave this group of wanderers or this, this second third the ability to tap into pure cosmic power and then provided them with a kind of angelic appearance and they became the Eternals. The third group was given to Oneg the Prober. And what he did is he planted what was referred to as a latent gene, which manifested in a couple different forms. Marvel uses this idea to explain why it is that people like Steve Rogers can be injected with a super soldier serum and then be exposed to Vita rays and instead of dying from radiation sickness, become Captain America. Or Bruce Banner can be exposed to gamma rays and instead of him dying of radiation sickness, he can become uh, the Incredible Hulk. Same thing with Spider-Man, Peter Parker, different characters like that. This was also used to explain the arrival of mutants, that this latent gene was basically the X gene and that during moments of high stress or usually during times of puberty, that these genes would activate and people would suddenly gain extraordinary power. Powers. And so for the Eternals themselves, when the, the, the first host basically left Earth, the Eternals were tasked with the role of safeguarding humanity against the Deviants due to the warlike nature of the Deviants. The issue with this is that almost immediately after the Eternals were really kind of, you know, tasked with this role and the Celestials left, you ended up getting something that was called the Titanos Conflict. And the reason why it's called this is because the Eternals basically established a city for themselves that was called Titanos. But you ended up having these two individuals who went to war against 
one another. The first one was Uranus, and the second one was Kronos. Now, Uranus believed that because of the power of the Eternals, that they were the rightful rulers of Earth, and they should have bas they should basically abandon the role given to them by the the Celestials, and they should just conquer the entirety of the planet. Kronos was far more peaceful and believed that should not be the case. And so again, this civil war emerged between these two factions, where you had one group that wanted to conquer the world and the other one who didn't. Now, ultimately, Uranus was defeated, and his followers lost the will to fight. And this led to Uranus and what few followers were the most loyal to him and didn't defect to the side of Kronos being banished from Earth. Now, this also devastated the population of the Eternals and really led to, to their population being reduced to a tenth of what it previously was. Now, for Uranus himself, he actually ended up taking to space and then basically with his followers plotting his revenge against Kronos. Ultimately, he settled on Titan, but then eventually they engaged in a civil war of their own, which pretty much wiped out the entirety of their remaining population with the exception of a woman by the name of Sui Son. But back on Earth, uh, Kronos had basically beseeched his sons uh, to essentially never wage war against each other. The problem with this is that it was believed that somewhere along the line, war would be inevitable. Just the nature of Eternals and really just the nature of humanity at their baseline. And so in order to prevent this war from potentially breaking out, that the sons of, of Kronos ended up splitting up. And so Zuros stayed on Earth to lead the Earth Eternals, and Alars took to Saturn's moon Titan to create his own faction of Eternals that resided there. Alars ultimately met Sui Son, and then they had two sons. The first one went on to become the superhero Star Fox, and the second one went on to become the villain Thanos. And so that's where Thanos comes from in Marvel Comics, those of you guys who aren't really familiar with that. Back on Earth, in the aftermath of the, the War of the Eternals, this coincided, or at least the conclusion shortly after that coincided with the second host of the Celestials, who had basically arrived to kind of check up on their experiment and see how it was progressing. When they arrived on Earth, they were pissed, because they realized the Eternals, because of their war, had basically abandoned the role that they were they were assigned by the Celestials. This led to the Deviants essentially taking over the, the surface world, or taking over the Earth, and then enslaving humanity. And so when the Celestials arrived, and they tried to stop the Deviants, the Deviants attacked the Celestials. And so the Celestials initiated what was called the Great Cataclysm, where they essentially sank the uh, the, the Kingdom of Atlantis, which was home to the, to the Deviants, where they had their capital city of Lumeria. And so what Deviants remained ended up going underground. The Eternals were warned if they failed to to maintain their role, that the, the, the Celestials would destroy what was left of the, the Eternals, they would cleanse the Earth entirely, and they would start all over again. And so humanity basically became the dominant species on Earth, with the Deviants residing underground, and the Eternals staying on the surface, and then actually allying themselves with the Greek gods, so like Zeus, Hera, and those individuals, and then just kind of keeping an eye on humanity, and just watching their progress, and protecting them for whatever, you know, extra terrestrial threats, or even Earth-based threats, may come from them, or the, or the Deviants. Now, this eventually led into what was called the third host when the celestials arrived yet again to not only check up on their experiment but to ensure the eternals were maintaining the role that had been assigned for them but in seeing the eternals had allied themselves with the greek gods and the greek gods through the eternals and even of their own volition were involving themselves in the affairs of men so like zeus showing up in a greek city and like sleeping with a girl and then having hercules right or even odin uh from the norse mythology getting involved with humanity's affairs thor being a superhero on earth not really a superhero in the traditional sense but basically operating on Earth, Loki doing some mischievous stuff, Balder doing his thing, it led to the, the Celestials coming to the realization that the, the involvement of this, this group of Sky Fathers could, in effect, alter the course of humanity's uh, experiment and basically ruin what it was the Celestials were, were looking to achieve. And so this led to the Celestials basically forcing uh, the Sky Fathers to stay hands off. And this was Marvel's explanation for why it was that like Odin and Zeus and all those guys were constantly involved in what humanity was doing and then suddenly stopped one day. Uh, at the same time, it was also realized by the Eternals that if they ever went to war with the Deviants, because the, the groups were kind of taking pot shots at each other here and there, that if they ever engaged in a full-on war, it would lead to the destruction of both of their races, which inevitably would lead to the destruction of the world. And so this led to a truce between the Deviants and the Eternals where they largely stayed hands-off with each other. And so following that, you basically go into the future endeavors of the Eternals running all the way up into the modern day. But again, the problem with this is there's not a whole lot known about their very various deeds and the kind of escapades they got involved in. The truth is that the story of the Eternals largely focus on Icarus or Circe or people like that. We do know that that at some point in the past, about 5,000 years ago, there was an Eternal by the name of Gilgamesh who allied himself with people like Hercules, uh, with people like Achilles, things like that. We knew that he was essentially a guy who ended up ruling a kingdom in Samaria and then had a daughter by the name of Circe who ended up going forward and doing her thing. But there's not a whole lot known about
about what they were doing during these these you know historical periods in in world history uh we really just kind of have these small little moments here and there and then ultimately pick up with like the modern era where the eternals are doing things and that's why i say we're better suited covering the origin of the eternals here and then in a future video going over like icarus explained and cersei explained and gilgamesh explained and different things like that and kind of covering these these characters individually so with that being said guys we're gonna bring this video to an end if you are new here to comics explained make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace